Well, a gracious good afternoon once again. Tis I, Norton I, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico, back with a little bit of San Francisco history for your entertainment and education during this quarantine that we're all in. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about one of the most famous San Franciscans ever, Mr. San Francisco himself, Herb Cain, who would have been 104 years old today. And a tip of the Imperial Chapeau to Mark Mitchell once again for bringing this to our attention this morning. Uh, he was born in Sacramento this day, 104 years ago, 1916, and died on February 1st, 1997 at the age of 80. Now, in 1936, he started writing a radio programming column for the San Francisco Chronicle. And when that column was discontinued in 1938, Kane Gain proposed a daily column on the city itself called It's News to Me, which first appeared on July 5th of that year. Except during his four years of service during World War II, and then in 1950 to 58, when he would write for the Examiner. He wrote the original column and the one he wrote for many years afterwards, after 1958, was for the San Francisco Chronicle. He would write the column six days a week until 1990, when he pared down to a mere five. And he wrote over 16,000 columns, each a thousand words each. And he was Mr. San Francisco. He rarely had to pay for a meal. One of his favorite haunts was the Washington Square Bar and Grill, which he would refer to as the Wash Bag, and a name that stuck. So his column was the longest-running newspaper column in the country. The secret of Kane's success, wrote an editor of a rival publication, was his outstanding ability to take a wisp of fog, a chance phrase overheard in an elevator, a child on a cable car, a deb in a tizzy over a social reversal, a family in distress, and give, and give each circumstance the magic touch that makes the reader, an under, gives the reader an understanding, eyewitness of the day's happenings. He was rewarded a special Pulitzer Prize in 1996 and was called the Voice and Conscience of San Francisco. He turned the coin, he coined the term, pardon me, beatnik. One of his most colorful personalities that he would bring to light and make famous was uh, probably San Francisco's most notorious waiter, Edsel Ford Fong, or Fung as the Wikipedia source said, but I think most people call him Edsel Ford Fong, uh, wrote, uh, rather, worked at a restaurant called Sam Wo for many years and was uh, deemed the world's rudest waiter, mostly by Kane, and it stuck. Uh, Sam Wo was a skinny three-story restaurant on Washington near Grant, and now it's on Clay near Kearney. And Edsel Ford Fung was a one-time part owner and became famous for berating and insulting customers all with tongue-in-cheek, and he died at age 55. And uh, you just have to learn about him, and as I said, we will in a future episode. He's probably the most no one of the most notorious waiters in San Francisco. Uh, but he did it with a flair. Was actually named after the automobile, Edsel Ford. And another person he made famous was a Facebook friend of ours, and hopefully he's tuning in today, Strange to Jim. Hi, Strange. He would once say, if I do go to heaven, I'm going to do what every San Francisco does who gets to heaven. Look around and say, it ain't bad, but it ain't San Francisco. That's he much, how much he truly loved our city. Now, on to the matter of a certain word that he and I both dislike, but there's more of that story. And of course, even this story for me uh, has a little bit of controversy, but we will definitely go with the anti-forces, and that is using the word Frisco. Please don't do it. Now, at one point, uh, he did call, I have a book rather, called Don't Call It Frisco, but he would later reverse that. Uh, in 1953, he said, Balderdash, the toughest guys in the old San Francisco waterfront, neither rubes nor tourists, call it Frisco. And no if each journalist would have tried to correct them. I feel the statement that Herb Cain is speaking of the people from a different walk of life. It's the muni driver, the construction worker, and it's also the tough cat with Frisco tattooed on his neck. And of course, we also have the Hell's Angels. I need to talk to them someday about the use of that word. So, use it, don't use it. Just... Not in our presence. We would appreciate that. 
<clears throat> one of the great honors bestowed onto Herb Cain was that the Embarcadero was also named Herb Cain Way in his honor. If you walk along the Embarcadero after this is all over, take a look up and you will see the signs with the artwork that appeared above his column every day from the 1970s on. And when you do that, notice the Transamerica Pyramid has to bend to get out of the way of his name. That's how important Herb Cain was. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you are enjoying these uh, little vlogs that we are doing. Stay safe, stay healthy, until we talk again. A gracious good day.